Arsenal 2, Spurs 0, North London derby done for Arsenal and a very, very convincing result. And I would say, I know Arsenal fans won't thank me for this because we're not actually halfway through the league yet. But you've got to say, not name on the trophy, but you've got to say hand on the trophy. Because where you are at at this moment in time, you are in a fantastic position. There's, 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 no, there's no denying that. You, you, you can't deny it. That that. Man City, uh, 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 you know, Pep's trying to put them out of it, but you're, you're eight points clear at the top of the league and you're playing fantastically well. Um, I, I don't know whether it's at that point now where Arsenal fans need to start believing you're going to win it because otherwise you might ignore it and miss out on it. Um, that was a thoroughly title-winning performance. Yes, Spurs were crap and that's their problem, but from an Arsenal point of view, I thought first half, attacking-wise, very, very good. You get the two goals done. Second half, it's about making sure you don't concede. And I thought Ramsdale, arguably man of the match, defence was very, very solid. Um, and it was about the back four, the goalkeeper in the midfield too. Whereas in the first half, it was more about the front four in the midfield too on the attack. And that's a complete performance. Very, very good performance from the attack in the first half. Very good performance from the defence in the second half. That's a complete team performance. And to win a title, you've got to be a complete team. I do look at Arsenal's bench and go, you know, a couple of injuries how sustainable are these performances but you know we're just about halfway through the league now there's still 60 points to play for that will be a little bit of a concern for Arsenal fans I'm sure but you've got to say it's hand on the trophy I said if they beat Spurs and they beat Man United next week where are the games coming from for Arsenal to be worried about well obviously Man City home and away if you lost them both that point eight point gap gets eroded to two points but Man City are are vulnerable themselves um you know, there was talk of maybe Man United getting into the title race. But I think with the way Arsenal have responded today with the Spurs win, it just keeps United nine points behind and keeps them away as well. So the way it's going for Arsenal at the moment, I think you have to say they've got a hand on the trophy and they have to believe that because they'll never get an opportunity like this. I don't think it will be like it next year. I think the way the, the, the you know, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, they'll all come again next year. And maybe Arsenal will be up there. But will they be up there like this next year? It's, it's a very good opportunity to be that far ahead and so many teams out of it. Like, there's so many teams having a bad season as well. Big clubs that can challenge for titles. So, from Arsenal's point of view, they've got to take it. Um, I'd look at the I would be looking at the transfer window. I know it's disappointing for them that they didn't get Mudrick, but there is money there. You need to spend it. Um, don't put yourself in May and go, I wish we'd spent that money. You've got, you've got to. You've got to because you're a bit like Man United, actually. You're in a position that maybe you didn't expect to be in, but you've got to take advantage of it. And you're also in a position where if you lost one or two players... I mean, I look at Man United, it's Casemiro, Rashford at the moment. If you lose one of those two, you're in big trouble. I think from Arsenal's point of view, if you lose Saka or Odegaard, you're going to be in trouble. They're going to be huge losses. So you've got to try and mitigate that and prevent that and have players that can come in and, and, and do a job. And one other thing I would say, interestingly, about Arsenal as well, very impressed with them all season, Arteta's, you know, that he is the, Arteta is now, Arteta has changed the game. Like, I've played the game. Uh, Arteta's changed the game because I remember when Arteta started off and, you know, people printing T-shirts, people doing videos, being very vile about him, who are Arsenal fans. And I was saying, no, I can see what he's doing. I can see what he's doing. You've got to be patient. I can see what he's doing. It's gradual. You can't change Arsenal from a team that's been nowhere near a title and isn't qualifying for the Champions League into title winners that consistently win overnight. It's impossible. And he's gradually re rebuilt that team. And now the rules have changed because now I think other clubs, Man United, hopefully Chelsea as well, are looking at what Arsenal have done and going, you've got to give them time. You, as, long as, the, as long as they've got a plan, you've got, to give, you've got to give them time. And he's changed the game. And also, I would say, it's a very interesting thing, because and this is very, very exclusive to Arsenal fans, do you not think it might be getting to the point now where you do get yourself out of that Europa League? And what I mean by that is you start playing your bench. You start playing your bench because you have a massive opportunity to win a Premier League. You've not done it since, what, 2004, 2005, whenever it was. You've got a massive chance to win a Premier League for the first time in nearly 20 years. Do you want to play Thursday, Sunday and, and, and potentially lose it? If you're playing Thursday, Sunday through February, March and April, it's very hard to play Thursday night and then win on Sunday with the same team. I know it's anti-competitive to say, you know, let's not take the Europa League seriously, but 
you're going to get top four. You're going to qualify for the Champions League for the first time in a few years. Other than winning the Europa League, what's the advantage of all those extra games playing Thursday, Sunday? And I know it's not a, a, it's not a very positive way of thinking, but it's not your fault there's been a World Cup in the middle of the season. It's not your fault everyone's going to get exhausted and be vulnerable to injuries more than any other season. Um, I'm not saying... I, I don't know whether Arsenal will do that, but it's got to be a consideration because nobody, not even Arsenal fans, expected you to be in this position in the league. And you are. You, are, you have got one hand on that trophy and you've got to think about how you keep that. One thing's out of your hands, which is injuries. The second thing is in your hands, which is actually bringing in a couple of players in the next couple of weeks. And the third thing's in your hands. How seriously do you take that Europa League? Because history is there. And if I was Arteta, I'd be looking at that history and statistically looking at how Thursday, Sunday impacts points accumulation in the Premier League between February and May if you go deep in the Europa League and whether you can afford to potentially drop points. It happened to United in September. Here's a warning for you. We had to go for it in Sociedad on the Thursday night to try and top our group. We played Villa on the Sunday who'd had all week off and they absolutely annihilated us because we were tired. Now, can you afford to risk that? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. But at the moment, it's a nice problem to have for Arsenal and they're looking very, very good. As for Spurs, I'll keep saying this. It's only my opinion. Conte don't fit. That doesn't work. The sooner you change that, the better. He's a very, very good coach who doesn't suit Spurs and you can see it a mile off. Um, it's been too consistent from Spurs. I don't think I've watched Spurs have a good game this season. I've seen them play okay when they're down and they come back and you know they have a good second half, but they don't. They never start the game with the right output. They never start the game with the right attitude, and they're ridiculously, tediously boring to watch. They play with a back seven. Um, it is a back seven. Goalkeeper, back five, two holding midfielders. It's defensive. There's no link-up player. There's no number ten. Harry Kane is basically trying to do that job and score goals. You're just ridiculously boring to watch, and um, you won't get top four. And Conte surely will leave in the summer. And it must be very disappointing for Spurs fans because you were so good between January and May last year. That front three was scoring more goals than anybody. You qualified for the Champions League. You bought a few good players in in the summer. And I was like, Spurs are going to be a team to watch. And then every game from the start of the season, I've watched them. I'm like, what is this they're doing? The players they bought. I mean, I thought Basuma was a good signing. I thought Spence was a good signing. Um, and others. And it's just not, they've just been so drab to watch. Um, and that, for a North London derby, is disgusting. I know Lorries cost them two goals, but the performance was, you know, North London derby, Arsenal are going to win the league. You're at home. You can stop them doing that. And there was just nothing. It's a shocking performance. And I'll leave that with Spurs fans to, to deal with it because I'm sympathetic to that. Shocking, absolutely shocking. Anyway, make sure you smash a like on the video and subscribe. Give us your comments below and I'll speak to you on the next one.